said rest at the end, not in the middle. And that's something I always live by. I'm not gonna rest, I'm gonna keep on pushing now. There are a lot of answers that I don't have. There are even questions that I don't have. But I'm just gonna keep going. I'm just gonna keep going and I'll figure these things out as we go. It's exciting when you win, it's exciting when you lose because the process should be exactly the same. Whether you win or you lose, is you go back and you look and you find things that you could have done better, you find things that you've done well that worked, you figure out how did they work, why did they work, how can you make them work again. And, uh, but the hardest thing is to face that stuff. Thank you. And uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> My parents were, were great. You know, growing up, you know, they instilled in me the importance of imagination, of curiosity, and understanding that, okay, if you want to accomplish something, I'm not just going to sit here and say, yes, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can, but you have to also put in the work to get there, right? So they taught me that at a really early age, man. And uh, when you grow up as a kid thinking that the world is your oyster, all things are possible if you put in the work to do it, you grew up having that fundamental belief. Who was more influential for you, your father or mother? Both were influential at different points. Yeah. Right. My, uh, my mom was there on a daily basis. Uh, my father uh, was really influential at a really critical time where I, you know, I had a summer where I played basketball when I was like 10 or 11 years old. And here I come playing and I don't score one point the entire summer. Really? Not one. How old were you? 10, 11. You are playing against other 10, 11 year olds? Uh -huh. or, and you didn't score once? Not one. Were you in the game? I was in the game. How did you not score? Because I was terrible. And I scored not a free throw, not a nothing. Not a lucky shot, not a breakaway layup, zero points. And I remember crying about it, being upset about it. My father just gave me a hug and said, listen, whether you score zero or score 60, I'm going to love you no matter what. Wow. Now that is the most important thing that you can say to a child. Because from wow. there, I was like, okay, it gives me all the confidence in the world to fail. I have the security there. But to hell with that, I'm scoring 60. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> right, right. Right, and from there, I just went to work. And I just wow. I stayed with it. I kept practicing, kept practicing, kept practicing. Is that when you think the mentality of hard work started to come in for you at that age, when you yeah. failed so miserably, I guess, that summer? I think that's when the idea of understanding a long-term view became important because I wasn't gonna catch these kids in a week. I wasn't gonna catch them in a year, right? So that's when I sat down and said, okay, this is gonna take some thought, all right? What do I wanna work on first? All right, shooting, all right, let's knock this out. Let's focus on this half a year, six months, do nothing but shoot, all right? After that, all right, creating your own shot. So you start, I started creating a menu of things. Mm. When I came back the next summer, I was a little bit better. Right. A menu being back. like, I've got my jump shot from 15, I've got my Yeah, I got my jump away, shot from 15, my... I got my three-point shot, like just open shots, not miss open shots, right? right. Be able to shoot it with speed, because those kids are so much more athletic. Yeah. And then the next summer I came back, it was a little better. Then the summer came back, you the scored. next summer it was a little better. I scored. Yeah, you know, it wasn't much, right. but I scored. And this you know? is 12, 13. 12, 13. And then 14 came around, back half of 13, 14 uh, years old, and then I was just killing everyone. And it happened in two years. And I wasn't expecting it to happen in two years, but it did because what I had to do was work on the basics and the fundamentals. While well, they relied on their athleticism mm. and their natural ability. And because I stick to the fundamentals, it just caught up to them. And then my body, you know, my knees stopped hurting. I grew into my frame. And, and then your athleticism, once you have the fundamentals, exactly. the hard work, the mindset, and you tack on the athleticism, exactly. it's then, then, game then, over. Then it was game over. Right? Wow. <laughs> I always try to outwork people, right? That's just how I made my mark. So the game was at seven. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna come to the Staples Center because we're playing, this is when the Lakers had Kobe and Shaq, right. okay? This is, this is like the championship Lakers. I was like, you know, I'm gonna get there at three o'clock and I wanna make sure I make 400 made shots. As I'm walking onto the court, who do I see? I see Kobe Bryant already working out. So I worked out for a good hour, hour and a half. And when I came off after I was done, I sat down and of course I still hear the ball bouncing. I look down, I'm like, this guy's, this guy's still working out. So he was working out, for like, it looks like he was in a dead sweat when I got here, right. and he's still going. After the game is over, I'm like, I, I have to ask this guy, like, I, I have to understand why he, he works like that. Right. So after the game is over, I'm like, hey, Kobe, like, why, why were you in the gym for so long? He's like, because I saw you come in, and I wanted you to know 
that it doesn't matter how hard you work, that I'm willing to work harder than you. You have this mindset, but how did you develop that? I don't, I don't know if that's what you call the mom mindset, but how did you develop that? And well, when did it start? It started in middle school and high school. Because a lot of the kids that I was playing against were inner city kids. And so you're looking at me as if, okay, this kid's soft. Right? He's from the suburbs of Philadelphia. His father played in the NBA, played professionally. He's got it easy. Got it easy, born on second, but you know, all this other stuff, right? And so they felt like they could try to be physical or try to intimidate me and do all this other stuff, which they couldn't, right? But now I'm saying, okay, well, you're trying to attack me. How am I going to attack you? How can I mentally figure out ways to break, break you down? How can I show you that, no, I have the edge, right? And so that's when it first started for me is figuring out how to get the upper hand on an opponent that way. And what would you do to mentally break people down then? Well, I mean, you know, like, uh, we used to have an All-American camp that I used to go to. And, you know, at the time, when I first showed up, I was a sophomore. And um, one of the things I would do is, while everybody would be at the cafeteria work, you know, eating and doing all sort of stuff, I'd just go back to the gym. I'd just go back to the gym. <laughs> it's just, it's, they'd know, be resting, they'd eating. Be resting, and they'd see me leave, right? But now you're in a tough position, because you're like, okay, I want to be like, I'm following the kid to go work out, right. but I know he's working, he's up early, and he's doing all this wow. other stuff. And so that was my way of, sho of showing them, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I may be from the suburbs, but you're not going to outwork me. There was a stretch um, in 03 uh, where Shaq was out with an injury, and Phil called me up to his office and said, okay, we need you to really turn on the afterburners, start scoring wow. them if we have to win. So, I did, and I wound up scoring, I think it was nine straight games for 40 plus points. Nine straight? Nine straight games. And then Shaq comes back, sec uh, it's second to last game of that. And then Phil calls me up to his office and says, Cole, okay, I need you to dial it back. I'm like, why? Like, we're winning. <laughs> I don't understand. It's because our goal is to win a championship. Mm. And you can get through the Western Conference with you playing this way. But in the East, you know, we, we can dominate them inside. Shaq in the post. But if you continue to do this, we'll lose Shaq. We'll lose him. His motivation, his excitement. What triggers him, right? He, so I need you to pull back so we can pull Shaq forward for June. Your kids can't see how hard you work. You go to the office, I come in the studio, they don't really see the effort, right? So how can we teach our children what it means to work hard? Well, you do it through training, right? So when I get up in the morning, my daughter goes with me. 4 a.m.? 4 a.m. My 15-year-old goes with me. She wow. goes with me before school, and it becomes a daddy-daughter thing. That's cool. Through that process, she understands the value of hard work and things taking time. And the same thing with my 12-year-old. Right? She practices every day. Right? And so it's through those behaviors is where I find the motivation. Mm. And what, is, what does love feel like for you? You know, it has its ups and downs. Right? Whether it's in marriage, whether it's in a career, you know, things are never perfect. But through love, you continue to persevere. You move through, you move through. And then through that storm, beautiful sun emerges. Yeah. Right? And inevitably, another storm comes. And guess what? You ride that one out too. Yeah. So I think love is a certain determination and persistence to go through the good times and the bad times with the someone or something uh, that you truly love.